So if I turn around, you'll see it. Nobody else will. All right, we're live. Are we, where are we live? On both? We're live on both Facebook and YouTube, thanks to Seth, the amazing DJ. I guess, I don't know what the, that would be called over there, but he's our, he's our DJ for the night. Uh, so we're streaming for you guys. Uh, welcome to On Set. I'm Daniel Norton. Not for you guys, unless you want to watch it as well. This is Dave. Uh, we're back. We used to do it during the day, so if you guys are new to watching the stream online, uh, welcome. Um, and we're going to be at 5 o'clock from now on, probably, unless people hate us at 5 o'clock, then we'll go back to noon. So we'll see. All right. So thanks for coming in the store. Of course, we, we appreciate you guys coming in. Uh, if you want to see other events on Adorama, go to adorama.com slash events, and you can, guys can sign up for all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, and uh, yeah, so let's get to it. So this is going to be uh, making the most out of your speed lights or a small flash or something like that, right? That's what it's supposed to be, yeah, right? Lighter. All right, good. So um, I do tons of events, right? I've done lots of videos. I've done all this other stuff. And one question I almost always get, and it's always after. Somebody always walks up to me when I'm done, they're like, could, could I have done that with a speed light? Right, because people have speed lights, right? I always say if you're starting out, the first light you should buy is a speed light because it's easy, it's relatively simple, you have it with you, so a lot of people start with a speed light and they want to know what they can do with it to make it a little bit better. If you guys don't know what a speed light is, I will show you right now. I'm using a Canon system today, by the way. This is the uh, 600 EXRT2, EX2RT or whatever. It's basically a, a small flash it goes on the top of my camera, right? It has a shoe on there. Oftentimes these are called on-camera flashes because they go on your camera, right? Although we're mostly gonna use it off the camera today. So the thing about flash is this. Flash is power, right? And when you get into lighting, right? Especially now because in the last, let's say 10 years or so, uh, you know, when I first started photography 10 years ago, uh, cameras weren't nearly as good in low light uh, as they are now, right? You have these new cameras, they got a gazillion ISO, your camera goes to what, 158,000 ISO, right? And you want to shoot that all the time? No, but even if you wanted to, even if that was totally clean, it wasn't a problem. If you don't light your scene, you're not fully in control. So at some point, uh, if you're doing portraiture, if you're doing things, product, anything where, where let's say, shy of, let's say, landscapes, where you want some control, you're gonna to want to use some light. So that's really what it's about. It's not about, uh, you know, it's too dark. It's about let's shape the light the way we want it to be. So flash is going to give us power. What it's going to allow us to do is here we are in Adorama, and we're in, uh, oh, hey, Marissa. Oh, hey. Marissa came today. So we're in the, the, the event space here, and, of course, it's lit with professional lights. So the light's not bad here. If I was lazy and in a rush, I could just, like, shoot Marissa now and just be done. You guys could go home. But uh, we're going to get rid of the light that's here because... I want to show you like, what you can do with the flash. So one of the first things you almost always want to do when you're using flash is get rid of the light in the space. Sometimes, let's say you're shooting at a wedding or something like that and you want to show the environment, you won't want to do that, but that's something else. Yes? You can't hear me. I have a microphone. Oh, uh, can we do something about the heater system? Then Something I don't see. Okay, we're gonna to try to do something about that. Can Could you ask? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you ask? Oh, I don't know the security guard's name. Uh, Keith, is it possible to turn off the vent? Thank you. That's Keith. Keith Everybody is the store director. Keith. He's amazing. Keith. All right, so. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. All right. Um, oh, wow, they can hear it online too. All right, good. So, oh, wow, it's midnight in Latvia. Thanks for staying up. It's New Year's. No, not yet. Um, what was I? I lost my track of my phone. Um, oh, yeah, you want to control the light in the space. So here we go. So we've got our flash. So the first thing I do whenever I'm using flash is first I set my camera up so that, ah, so that none of the light in the space affects my shot. The way I do that is it doesn't matter what camera you have. I have a 1DX one, 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 one uh, Canon. Set your camera at its maximum synchronization speed for flash. So in this case, it's 250th of a second. Waiting for the high-speed sync question? Don't ask me. We're not going to talk about high-speed sync yet. Okay, so there is a, is a, there's a spot in your camera that's set as the maximum sync speed. Okay, that's basically the maximum speed in which your camera will synchronize with the flash when you fire it. If you want to know how that works technically, go to Adorama TV and watch Mark Wallace did a video about it with a graphic and everything. It's pretty awesome. But uh, uh, we're not going to talk about that today because he's much more technical than I am. 
I don't even know what my camera's called. So, okay, so we have the Canon. Uh, we're gonna set it at 250, because that's my maximum sync speed. We're gonna set our ISO at our lowest ISO. Why? Because we have power, and we don't need to crank the ISO. We wanna get the best quality. So we're gonna go 100 ISO. Lowest ISO within its normal range. This camera also goes to some lower ISO, 12, we'll say. But that's going below the normal range, so you don't wanna do that either, because that can also introduce noise. You wanna stay within your normal range, lowest number. The third factor in your exposure triangle is your f-stop. We're gonna determine that based on where we are, right? You're gonna look at the light in the space and you need to make it dark enough that it'll be a black frame, basically. I've been here before. I know that it's around 5.6. If you don't know, just use the meter in your camera. Throw your camera in manual, look at the little meter that goes back and forth, put it all the way to the minus side, take a picture, right? So I'll do that, right? I don't even know if my camera was set up, but I think it is. So. I'm, I'm over here, I'm set up at, uh, I'm in Capture One, by the way, for people who want to know. I'm at 250, 100 ISO, 5.6. My frame is essentially black. Now I can also test it, because this is one advantage to being tethered. I'm in Capture One here, I'm just gonna grab my exposure slider, just like as if I was in Photoshop, and I'm gonna pull it over until I see Marissa. There she is. All right, there's Marissa. She's looking a little small down there. Um, that's about, two and three quarters stops before I start to see her. That means I'm very underexposed. So I could go to F4 or whatever. I wanna stay around two stops underexposed. I'll leave it where it is for now unless I have a reason to change it. Okay, so why am I that far underexposed? Because you don't want the ambient affecting your shot. That's right, I don't want the ambient affecting my shot. And also I don't want it in my shadows. So let's say I'm only a stop underexposed. And then later in post I realize that like, oh my shadows are a little bit dark, I wanna bring them up for, for clarity. I'm gonna start bringing up color of light that I don't want, right? So we're gonna get rid of all this light as much as possible. I could go to F8, but why waste power? We're using uh, small flashes that are running on AA batteries. We don't wanna waste all the, all the power. So now we're set. What to do next? We turn our flash on, right? So the flash is on top of the camera. It uses something called TTL. That means through the lens. I'm gonna look at it, it's set. So the flash is communicating with the camera. You could stand up now if you'd like. You don't have to, but it would be nice. The flash is communicating with the camera. I'm going to look through. This is probably going to be the best shot of you all day, so get ready. I'll zoom in a little bit. She's getting good. Oh, all right. That, that's like the best look that she can make. Here we go. Boom. And now, there she is, right? The flash, you didn't see it because it was really fast. The flash did something called pre-flash. It sent a little guy out there with a light meter, and he held it, and he metered it, and he ran back to the camera, <laughs> set the, the power, and boom. She's properly exposed, right? Done. Thanks for coming, guys. Okay, but I th this problem is with this, right? This is not ideal. Maybe you like this style. If you're into this style, like that hard light, fashion, you know, uh, uh, who's doing that? Urban, uh, no, no. Terry Richardson style, then you've got a really short video today, guys. Thanks for watching. You can go, but if you're not into that, um, we'll move on. So we have a couple of problems here. Number one, the light is on camera, right? which means that we're not able to really give a lot of shape to her face, it's very flat, right? We got a little shadow here. It's a very hard light. It's hard because it is small. Hardness and softness of your light is determined by its size relative to your subject. So small light source far away is gonna give us that hard rim line, which is great for bringing out detail, but do we wanna bring out a lot of detail on the pores of people's skin and stuff in portraits? Usually not, right? So we're gonna tend away from a really hard light source. Also because it's on camera, I can't control where my shadow falls, right? And I say this all the time, wherever your light is on the opposite side of that, there's gonna be a shadow. a shadow, right? So where's the shadow? The camera's, the light's here, so the shadow's right behind her. We get that wall shadow thing. That's not usually something we're looking for, right? So we wanna eliminate that. We wanna move the shadow, we wanna make the light softer. Those are probably two goals right away that we wanna do. We can actually do that with the camera on the flash a little bit um, by bouncing. Right? People bounce the flash. It's like, hey, my flash, you know, I spent a lot of money for it. It can bounce like this. Problem with bouncing the flash here is ceiling's very high, right? I'm really close. Light bounces in straight lines, right? So if I shoot it straight up, she's going to get dark shadows under her eyes. That's what we think anyways, right? Should we try it? Also, might not even be enough power. Yeah, it's barely enough power to do anything. Not really in a great position, right? Kind of noonday sun. Right, we don't really like that, right? No. Who told you to bounce that flash? That book that you read in 1973, don't bounce a flash anymore, nobody's bouncing flashes. All right, 1984, sorry. Uh, all right, so if we wanna bounce the flash, we want to bounce it off of something, 
we can, if we happen to have, oh, I don't know, a whiteboard like Dave has right here, we can bounce it off the whiteboard, right? We can create uh, our, our light, right? Boom, and she's looking up because she's, she's done this before. Now we have nicer light, right? A little bit nicer. Doesn't solve all our problems. We still have a shadow behind her, right? Mm -hmm. The light's a little softer, right? You can see the edge is soft, but it's still pretty punchy. I mean, this is better than nothing, but I think we can do more than that, right? Number one, let's change its direction. How can we do that? We can bounce the flash, let's say to the side maybe, right? Why not do that? We'll do that, put the light over there. One thing you want to be wary of when you do this is some of the light could creep out the side of the flash. So if you're a little nervous about that, just put your, your hand there. Boom, we do that. Now we've changed the direction, right? Still a shadow on the wall, but we're, we're showing you we can change the direction of the flash, right? And also, it's a little bit softer now, right? It's getting a little bit of nicer light on her face. If it wasn't for that terrible shadow, this wouldn't be horrible, right? It's getting closer. So there's a couple of things we could do. Number one, we could move her closer or away from the wall, right? Because people always ask me, what do I do? But we don't have a lot of space, right? We're not gonna, we don't have space to just move her. And plus, right now, my flash is also lighting my wall, right? So I don't want to uh, make my wall dark, per se. So I want to get that shadow lower. So we want to maybe put the reflector board, I don't know, like here or something? Yeah, we'll try that. We'll aim this at it. I'll go like this. We'll try that. Marissa wasn't even looking, but I took a shot anyways. And look, we move the shadow a little further, right? See how we're moving it? Doesn't look bad now, right? Almost looks decent. Good. We're getting, we're moving, we're moving forward, right? Single flash on the camera. For some reason, I take sharper pictures when I'm not looking through the camera. I can't figure that out. I, why is that? I'm, who knows what's going on there? I don't, okay, so. You should. You should know what's going on. <laughs> I do not know what's going on. Okay, so let's say we want to get the flash closer to her, because by moving it closer to her, it will make it softer, right? Because softer is going to be bigger. Bigger is closer is going to be bigger. We can take it off the camera. Oh, should we do the wall thing first? Let's do the wall thing first, because that's always fun. Stand here for me. Oh, yeah. yeah, why not? We haven't done this in a while. Let's say you don't have Dave, because not everybody has Dave. You all wish you had Dave, but not everybody's got Dave. But let's say you're in a space and there's a wall. There's a wall here, right? Boom. Come a little closer to the wall. We'll cheat a little bit. Good. We're going to bounce the flash off the wall, because the wall is big, right? We'll probably give it a little bit of an angle, maybe. Try this. Oh, that not, not looking through the camera finally uh, didn't pay off. Let's try it again. It's really sharp. <laughs> okay. And I got nothing. All right. We're failing here. Boom. Now we've got light bounced off the wall. We've got a little more drama going on, right? And a lot, lot softer light. Right? We can see the edge of the shadow soft. So if you've got a gray wall or a roll of Savage, uh, yeah, a little Rembrandt actually. Yeah, that Rembrandt did. He took his speed light, he put it right near the wall. Done. <laughs> exactly how he did it. <laughs> yeah, he, he had the, the 500. This is the 600 now. <laughs> All right. Jeez. All right. So now this is one of those cases, by the way, that if we wanted to see more of the store, right, where I might not eliminate the light. Because you can see now behind her, you know, we got that Sony back there. Is that Sony? Yeah, it's Sony back there. Let's say I want to see that because this was a Sony ad or something. I would just use a slower uh, shutter speed to bring the store up. You guys get that part, right? Mm -hmm. We'll do that for another lesson. All right, so moving on. Let's take the flash off the camera, because we have to get it off the camera within the first 10 minutes. Oh. We've already missed that. Oh. You wanted to bounce off the wall. I know. I added that extra thing. All right, let's use uh, a little softbox. So this is a LumaQuest softbox 3. I know you haven't seen one of these before, right? And I got this one because, um, well, honestly, because it was just sitting here. But this is a softbox three, because this is the kind of thing you can have in your bag. It's small enough to carry with you everywhere. It folds up. Also, it's plastic, so if you have like a drink and somebody has a nice table, you can just put it on there. Good to go. What was the name? This is a LumaQuest softbox Lumi three. LumiQuest. Yep. Boom. Made in the USA. In New Jersey. Actually, I don't know where they make them. Yeah. By the way, LumaQuest. I'm going to say this right now, so hopefully they still do it. Uh, guarantees their stuff forever. When I met uh, Quest, like maybe like five or six years ago, I had one that I bought. Actually, maybe my father bought it because it was like in 1990. I wasn't born back then. Um, <laughs> a box, and I showed him. I'm like, man, I've had this thing forever. It's so great. He's like, oh, it's falling apart. Send it in. We'll give you another one. I'm like, dude, I bought the thing in like 94. I think I could buy another box. Come on now. <laughs> but they guarantee them forever. So they don't last forever, but they'll guarantee them forever. All right, so this just goes on with uh, what they call the rapid strap or something like that. Um, or you can just tape it on there with Velcro. 
Now, what am I doing here? Making the light source bigger. I'm making the light source bigger, which is going to make it softer. I'm also adding diffusion, right? Mm -hmm. Diffusion helps with your highlights. Where hardness, softness has to do with your shadows, your highlights are controlled by diffusion. The more diffused your light source is, the, the, more, the less contrast you'll have in your highlights. Oftentimes, when you add diffusion, you're also softening the light. But diffusion by itself does not soften the light. So just keep that in mind. Thanks. It's an adorama. I don't know if you guys can see. I'm wearing it backwards. All right. That's correct. And, and, and the size of the light. So diffuse, diffusion controls your, your highlights. Uh, the size of the light controls your hardness softness. So the more diffused the light is, the, the, more, uh, the, more, the, the lower the contrast will be in your highlights. So if you, let's say you're shooting somebody who's shiny, um, or let's say shiny makeup, or you're shooting a bottle that's shiny, or anything that's shiny, uh, by diffusing it, you will, you will actually break up that, uh, that highlight. That make sense? Yeah. Cool. All right. By the way, if you want this pink gaffer tape that you can uh, label all your, fl your flashes with, Seth sells it here. He makes it in Brooklyn. <laughs> all right. He did make my shirt in Brooklyn. All right, so uh, does this already set up? You already set it for me. You're so good. Okay, so Dave's got me set up in, in slave mode A. Oh, there we go. I'll just let go of it because you guys do it better than me. All right, good. Thank you. This is the STE-3. That is only relevant to you if you shoot Canon. If you shoot anything else, it's their version of it. Okay, this is basically a transmitter that is going to allow me to control my flashes. Okay? If you shoot a uh, Nikon, it's like SU-800. Other people, they call it blah, 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 whatever it's called. I don't know. Um, basically, it's going to allow me to control multiple groups, which means I can set my flashes at different power ratios. I can still use TTL, and we will to start with. So when I take this, uh, this bad boy, I throw it on top of my flash, on top of my camera, rather. And, and we see a green light, which means that they're talking. Um, and then we're going to put it, I don't know, should we do like a beauty thing, like in the center? Yeah, we'll get it in nice and close, right close to our grill. Actually, come a little closer to me, too, because I'm, there we go. Well, you can back up, Dave. Yeah, thanks. And then, little tip, because you came closer. There we go. All right, good. Let me change my focus point. Oh, there we go. So many focus points. Oh, I think you might have blinked. Wow. Now it's in there. We got drama, right? Some drama for your mama. Okay, it's a little hot, right? Don't freak out if you're using TTL and the exposure is a little bit hot or dark. But remember, a meter is only going to tell you what it thinks is the right exposure, and it's doing a lot of math and whatever. And if you feel like it's too bright, although it's probably it's okay. actually safe within a safe exposure range, I'm looking on my screen. Um, maybe just tilt it so it's get a little, a little more tilt, so we get a little bit uh, more of a scoop uh, on it. We're going to try to control because remember that her face is, is straight at me, and the flash is at an angle. So, oh, well, you are a blinker. All right, no, we're not blinking. All right, so now we've got like more even light on her face, something dramatic. If we wanted to fill in those shadows a bit, we could add a, a fill card. Can you do both? You can do both, right? You're so good. I can help. Oh, Marissa can do it. She's so helpful. The important thing with the fill card is make sure your light's hitting it. I know that sounds obvious, but it's not, <laughs> right? And the closer the fill card is to the subject, the, you're in a bit, Dave, the, uh, the more fill you'll get. So in other words, if we get the card in nice and close, so we can see it filled in under her chin and into her eyes. You can actually see it in her eyeball. Let me see. I'll open up. Actually, let's do one without the fill card because with her face in the same position. What? That's the new fill card. That's the new fill card. All right. Which will show the, the silver. All right. Uh, up a tiny bit. Right there. Good. All right. Well, it's in my Charlotte, but we can see the difference. All right. So here it is with and without fill. Right. So depending on how you like Marissa's lip area, uh, you can light it. Yeah, and then we have silver as well. Ooh, fancy silver. Yeah, this is super shine. Good, uh, you're in a smidge, Dave. Good. Out at me. Yeah. Bam, silver. Yeah, that's not that bad. Yeah, the angle of reflectance is equal to the angle of incidence. All right, so now we've got this really dramatic light right on, on Marissa. This may be too dramatic for, for whatever you're doing. So keep that in mind. Why is it super dramatic? Because she's so close, the light's so close to her, right? But the light's far away relative to the background, right? Ratios are key here. 
your, your inverse square law, which I'm not going to tell you what it is. Just, just say that a lot. When people ask you about photography, be like, inverse square. Uh, it basically means that if the light's close to something, it's brighter. right? But that all works in proportion, meaning that if the, the light is back here, it's, ratio, it's proportionately further away, or I should say closer to her relative to the whole distance than it is when the light's here. You follow me? Which, so if you want to make it more even, you'd have to keep the light further back. Well, what happens if we put it further back? It's going to be hard because it's going to be further away, which means it's going to be smaller. Mm -hmm. These are all trade-offs. So if you want to put the light really close to somebody uh, um, to get that effect, then you're going to get what they call fall-off, which means the light's going to get very dark behind her, which we can take care of by adding extra lights and all kinds of other goodness. Let's just do that, right? We're going to jump right to it. We have more than one light because why wouldn't you, right? Here you are in Adorama. It's like, Daniel, how many lights would you like? Well, how many have you got? No. So uh, there is this, this uh, idea, I guess I'll call it, that like, the people that only shoot with speed lights, and you can certainly do that. I think when you're buying your equipment when you first start, it's a good idea to think about your ultimate goals. Because it can be kind of expensive to just all buy speed lights. Right? To buy three speed lights to sit in the studio and do portraits is going to probably be not the most efficient use of your money. If you're, though, always on location and you need to run on battery and you're traveling to other countries and do things like that, then it might be worth it. So think about that before, before you buy a lot of them. Um, but in any case, we have two. And let's just put a bare one on the background. Let's just light the background. Why not? Is that one in B? All right. That's in B. Right now, I'm just leaving. By the way, for TTL, of course, everything's ratios, right? So I'm just setting everything with what I would call at exposure. So that means that the flash is going to give me enough power to give me 5.6 or what it thinks is the right amount of power, right? I'm not setting, I don't know if it's at half power or quarter power or any of that kind of stuff because it's making the exposure for me. Every single time I press down the shutter speed, this little guy runs out with a light meter, he holds it up, meters it, comes back, tells the camera, every single time. That's the power of TTL. That means if I'm running around, things are moving, right? It's always gonna give me the right exposure. The downside to that is that it's always going to give you a slightly different exposure. So if you are using TTL and shooting, let's say, a product sitting on a table, you may get slight variations, so you might not want to use it for that kind of stuff. That makes sense? Uh, yeah, that's good. Perfect. I'm going to leave everything in the middle, or at zero, as I said. We're going to come back in with all that coolness. Here we go. Boom. Now the background's lit. Right? It's kind of spacey. It just... What's the zoom on that bad boy? 200. 200. Dave zoomed in at 200 because Dave's creative. So <laughs> when you have your flash on top of the camera, as you zoom your lens in and out, the flash itself zooms to give you the maximum amount of light, the most useful amount of light, right? You don't want to waste a bunch of light. So you can do that when it's off camera, too. And Dave was like, I'm going to be creative. And he set it at 200 millimeters, which is basically giving you a spot of light. If we went wider, we can cover the wall with light, make it more even. It does look a little bit like an interrogation, which is probably appropriate for Marissa. She's got the head light, light over her yeah. Head. I'm trying to have like as few catch lights as possible to be more like Seth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. My style is all about stealing everybody else's style. <laughs> all right. So it spread it out more, but it didn't give us a really bright background, which maybe we want because the TTL doesn't really know what to do. So let's start to do a little bit of correction, OK? I feel like it's a little bit hot on her face, and that's my A light, and the background is not hot enough, right? That's my B. So the, the wide angle? Yeah, let's go wide angle adapter too. Why not? So I'm going to go into my little doodad here, and I'm going to, we can't show you this close, unfortunately, guys. Uh, and I'm going to go group. I'm going to go to A, and I'm going to dial it down a bit. Now, when you dial it down, what you're telling it is, Hey, man, when you do your metering, get the number that you're going to get and just give me a little bit less light. right? I'm not changing it at certain percentages. I'm changing it in ratio to its exposure, which means that it'll keep changing in that ratio for me, which is good. Um, all right, so I'm going to go to B, which is our background light, and I'm going to turn that bad boy up, let's say one stop. And we'll just try it. Now, how do I know what to set it at? I'm just kind of guessing it. I mean, I don't really know right now because I'm not sure how I want it to look. We're just kind of playing around to see what we get. That's a bit brighter. OK. Let's get in, get in there. She's, she's better, better, betterly. That is definitely not the right word. 
She's she is more correctly exposed. The background is still a bit kind of uh, all over the place. Maybe. Oh, she has a bounce over jacket. Maybe uh, maybe bring it up and and put it in the center. Yeah, we'll do something cooler. We're going to bring the light up into the middle. We have it on a C stand. Or we could go under her with it. Yeah, put it right behind her. Maybe that's more realistic to what people can do. We're using C stands because that's what we have. I mean, obviously, if you're using uh, speed lights, because you want to be small, you may not have. Uh, you may not have. Excuse me, Laura. You may not have uh, C stands. You don't need them really. You could just have little stands. That's a knuckle. Just in case you want to know. Or a two and a half inch grip head. Cool. Question so far? Yes. Uh oh. If you were to take the request behind her head like this and then take the card and put them directly so the card is at this angle rather than down here. Yeah. Oh, I see. So the question isn't what would happen. It's can you just do this for me? No. Yeah, we could do that. No, I like it. We'll do that. Why not? Yes, we will do it. We'll do it after it. Remind me in a second, and we'll do that because that's actually part two of this. No, no, you're good. You're, you get ahead of us. I like it. All right, she's ahead. I like that. All right, so we're gonna. Uh oh, Marissa's getting a little bit weird going on. Maybe bring your chin up a little bit because of the lights. Yeah, don't screw it up. Good. All right. Okay, so what happened there? We don't know, so we'll just take another one. Yeah, it didn't fire. It's not firing. It's not seeing the test or anything. What doesn't need to? It's a radio. Uh, can I hit the test button? I'm going to hit the test button now to see what happens. Just bring it. Hmm. Thank you. It is indeed firing. Let's see. I'll do this. Turn in the battery. Hold on. Well, it's firing. There it is. Okay, we're getting really moody on her. Let me bring the B belly back up. So you're gonna, you can't have your chin down so much with the small. Okay. The A button. No, the B is in the back, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna bring B up more if I can, and I think A is good. Okay. Yeah, because she's gonna bring her chin up in this next shot. Yeah. What happened in that flash shot with the? The flash didn't go off. It was probably out of synchronization. Okay. I'm guessing it's because we have these cheap batteries in there, but uh, yeah, there we go. All right. Now, this is, this is kind of important, right? And I think this actually comes to something that we were talking about before the session about getting shape on somebody's face. Sometimes you have to think about the light source that you're using and cheat a little bit. Like you're gonna see that in, in this a lot, I'm gonna have her have her chin up and the reason for that is the light source is so small, I'm gonna have heavy shadows, which means Remember, wherever there's no light, there's a shadow. So if her chin is down, I'm getting a lot of shadow under her nose. If her chin is up, she gets a tiny little shadow. It's all about keeping that, it's like a sundial. I stole your thing right there, sundial. It's like a sundial. So that's why it's gonna always look better. With her chin down, long shadow, right? Because small light sources cost casting a long shadow. Make sense? Right, so we're gonna cheat a little bit. So there you go, background's lit. It'd be cooler if it was like a color. Okay. What if it was like, Pick a color. Green. green. I have gels. We have the LumiQuest gels. Green. We have the LumiQuest gels. I think they're here. There's like a gel kit. I saw it. Yeah, got it. There must be a green one in there somewhere. Yep. It's like a lime green. How far are we into this demo? Because the hat's going to fall off. I can feel it. I knew it wouldn't stay on my head the whole time. It's, I can feel it. I feel it moving. They're saying your beanie is receding. It is receding. Yes, it is. Right? It's getting, it's getting sucked back. I knew it. All right, here we go. I'm gonna fix it. Now I'll turn it the correct way so you can actually read this as Adorama. That's right. You wish you had an Adorama baby. I'm wearing a hat now for some reason. It's my new thing. It's nighttime. We wear hats. You got silver boards now. We got silver boards. Dave's putting a gel on. Any questions? Why I put a gel on? Yes. When you were showing the B light and you changed it from the 200 mil to the wide angle. Okay, so yes, I'm sorry. We did something when we didn't explain what it was. So when you zoom the flash with the little mechanical uh, zoom inside of it, it, go, it has a certain range. Like I think in this flash, it's like 24 to 200. When you pull the little doodad out of the front, 
that moves it to like 14 or, so, or, or the like. It's a, it's a wide angle, uh, they call it a wide angle diffuser, which is confusing because it doesn't diffuse the light, but it spreads the light out more, that's all that is. But whenever you pull this out on most flashes, it will automatically zoom the head to the widest setting, which means you can't pull this out and then zoom it to 200, it won't work usually. And you don't want to do that because you'll burn the front of your flesh. I do have a question. Yes. You were talking about when you zoom okay. the lens, the, um, mm -hmm. the zoom on the flash zooms yep. closer. Is, is that based on the focal length of it? That's right. When you zoom, when you zoom your lens and you have a flash on top that's, that's, that's a flash that works with your camera, mm -hmm. the flash will actually zoom. That will give you the correct amount. So if I'm, let's say I need a 50 millimeter lens to get both of you guys in, it will zoom to 50 to cover both of you instead of being 24 and like lighting over here and over here. Now, you can mess around with that, right? Some people zoom it in closer to get like a vignette. Some people do it to throw like a pot of light. You can actually throw it at like 200 when you're doing a group and only hit one person with it. Can be very creative uh, ways to mess with the flash by using the zoom. But usually I do it when it's off camera and you're trying to like get a little more control. Is that only in TTL? Uh, no, you can zoom it. Uh, any flash that's compatible with your, your camera that zooms should automatically zoom. You shouldn't have to be in TTL for it to zoom as far as I know. There's somebody online, I tell me right now, there's a flash that doesn't zoom, it's okay, I, I admit. Well, do they, well, they just Google it, they're like, I know there's a flash out there. <laughs> I'm gonna find it. Okay, okay. We have a lot of welcome back stuff. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it, the most amazing thing about doing this live is that all the resources that everybody online, whenever I don't know something, somebody's like, Daniel, and then Seth tells me. So it's like, it's like a little cheat sheet for me there. So, but anyways, yes, oh, we got it. All right, cool. So Dave's got a green gel on there. Uh, he's got all this other stuff going on. I don't know what we got going on. We got a lot of stuff. We might need help pretty soon. All right. You want to go silver? Uh, well, let's go silver. Why not? Yeah. Hell yeah. That's, that's Bounce Boy 2.0 Brooklyn. Yeah. Good, good, good. And remember, work your chin up so you're not all weird. Yep, there you go. It's very glamorous. Boom. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so what's the problem? Well, yeah, the flash, I think the, the silver is a bit specular, so which is the opposite of diffuse, which means that it's bouncing in areas so it's not even. That's one of it, but also the green is a little bit pale, right? Yeah. That's because when you're using a gel, the amount of light coming through, it's going to affect how dense it is. So, so we're actually overexposing the background, so it's lightening it. So we'll, let's lighten it a little bit to try to make, make it a little bit of darker green, and we'll use it to go back to the whiteboard, because I think the silver, for this particular uh, modifier, is not working that well. Okay, so I'm gonna dial this back down. It was at plus two on the background on B, now I'm going to plus one. Uh, currently, A is at uh, minus two thirds. Good, that should give us a little bit of darker green. Okay, let's work your chin up a bit more and let's get a little more fill in there. Good, here we go. There she is. Now oh, I'm gonna be too much busier. She's like, what, what, I see something over there. But yeah, so, so we're working her, we got the shadow. And again, this small light source can be nice if the person's got the right face for it, right? Because a small light source is going to create a uh, very, uh, you know, it's only gonna cover a small area, especially if it's close, so it's gonna create a shadow, and that can showcase things. It can showcase cheekbones, it can showcase like the shape of a lip. Um, so, you know, depending on your subject, this could be very nice. But we could go bigger. Should we go bigger? Are we ready to go bigger yet? No, it's not, we're not ready to go bigger yet. Instead of doing that, Let's do something more precise. Let's switch to the snoot. Snoot? I know. I know. I'm excited. I think it's over here. <laughs> this is the LumaQuest snoot. Patent pending. You can also use it if you do any carpentry. You can like do some measurements with it. All right. So the way this works is it goes onto the front of your camera. So a snoot makes kind of a circle of light. So you got this guy, right? You got a little circle. But this little... Uh, flow chart here thing goes inside and it allows you to get different shapes. See, pretty cool, right? And I guess what's cool about this is it has the measurements on it. So I guess if you if you like, oh, I like two inches, you can always go back there. I can't say I ever remember where I set it, so I just usually just do it and I see what looks good. The thing about setting up a snoot uh, is once we get it kind of, uh, we're gonna use it for the background, I guess, right? Just swap it from the other flash, maybe? Oh, or you're gonna do something else with it? Right. Yeah, let's do that, because then we'll use this one for hair light. So when you made the shot more green, you kept the exposure constant and just brought down the light? 
That is correct. When I made the background more green, I just lowered the power on the background light. Since we've been started here, I have not changed any settings on the camera, and I, and I don't really intend to. Generally, when you're doing studio lighting, which we're kind of doing here, um, you don't want to change the camera. Once you're set, the camera stays, right? Everything you do with the lights. Because if you change the camera, then all the lights could potentially change, although we're using TTL, so it won't really matter, but. They're asking if this makes you snooty. <laughs> Does it make you more snooty? I like that. I love a bad joke. What's that? You cannot get this hat, and that's why I'm wearing it. I'm just going to say that. Nobody knows where it came from. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I wore this hat in a video, and somebody was like, oh, where can I get a hat? And I asked everybody, where did I get this hat from? And they're like, oh. Nobody's seen one before except for the one I have. How do you want this? Uh, Let's do like a circle of light di directly. Oh, you want to do like a, an oval? Yeah, like a pop behind her. This is going to be like her, her like senior portrait. Yeah, I know. I never actually got this. You never got a senior portrait? <laughs> yes. Well, in, in, in my parents' house in, in Florida, there is my senior portrait of my high school hanging on the wall. And uh, I'm wearing a sweater. And I got so much for the, sorry, mom, I'm going to tell this story. Yeah, my mom still to this day says something because I wore a sweater and not a suit for my senior portrait. Yeah, but you're a rebel. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm going to get a little closer. A little closer. Is that like your good side or something? How do you keep turning away from Dave? All right. Wait, I think. I just did no. that because whenever the model is saying crazy stuff, you should always take a picture. It's important a lesson to learn. Well, I'm also kind of seeing where the <laughs> circle is. That's good. Maybe a little bit lower, I think. Okay. You want to go a little tighter? Though? I want to do like shoulders, like, you know, very senior portrait. Yeah. Yeah. Now, one way that you can aim the flash is as you get it kind of in position, you can test pop it like Dave's doing, and you'll see the circle of light on the wall. So if you're ever curious about how to aim small flashes because they're modeling lights, that's usually a good way to do it. And you can stay that way. Yeah, that's perfect like this. Yeah, that way Dave doesn't have to struggle. It's a struggle. All right, so let's just see where this is. We're just gonna test this light one light at a time. That's how we do it. Like one day at a time, that was a soap opera. Okay, it's, it's a little hot. I can tell it's hot because I can see it like burning out. So I'm gonna lower the power a smidge. Um, and I think it's also too tight. So we might need to maybe not use the whole neck. All right, so right now, remember, B was set. Oh, that's C, actually, right? This is B. That's B. B is set at plus one. Remember, we did that earlier. One thing that you should do, which I did not, is uh, whenever you may change a modifier, you should put all your TTL settings back in the middle because, you know, that way you don't confuse yourself. I'll back it up a bit, too. Yeah. Back that light up. Back that light up. Back that up. There right, we go. That looks exactly the same. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, did dots in my eyes. That's so crazy. Well. Let me turn off this light real quick. Yeah, do it. Because I'm changing the All right, so Dave's turning everything off except for B. I'm going to go into it. I'm going to turn down the power. I think what's happening here is that it's trying to light everything. This is one of the tricks, right? Right? TTL is seeing this, and it's like, whoa. It's like, I'm, not, I'm just not going to change, Daniel. I don't care if you're live. I'm just going to say the same. Uh-huh. All right. You know what that means? You made me do it. I'm going to manual. Now, where do I set it? I'm in manual now, right? I don't really know. I mean, I, I don't have a, unless you have practice with your flash, you're not going to know exactly where to set the power. I usually put it somewhere in the middle, which on this flash would be, I think, a sixteenth power. So that's where I'm going to put it to start. And we're going to take a picture, and then we're just going to judge from there, right? I could use a light meter, but uh, I don't feel like it. Because it reads. Okay. Okay. Any questions? No? Nothing? Is it because it's very clear or because it's very confusing? <laughs> All right, good. There is a test at the end. You realize that, right? But if you pass the test, you get a free piece of candy. <gasps> so we're by the register. All right. You can have it. Actually, I think they got to get all the candy out of here. Oh, because it closes. Because of Passover. Yeah, it closes. You guys got to take some candy with you, man. You got to get rid of it. Ooh, that's dark, but not in the right spot. 
-hmm. All right, so now I'll turn it up. That's good. We're at 1 16th power. So I'm going to go in here. And again, my controller just allows me to do this. I'm going to go, I think I'm going to go to 1 quarter. I'm just going to go two stops. Whenever I'm doing this kind of stuff, I always like to go too far. Story of my life. There we go. All right, now I'm back to overexposed. So that 1 8th is probably where you want to be. We're just actually, actually, we were just having this conversation that 1 8th power seems to always be the right place. Hmm? Boom. There we go. That is good. But in and of itself, it's nothing, right? But we're going to add another light now on her, on her uh, face, on her grill, as it would be. On my grill. On her grill. There we go. Perfect. But you must turn the light on. No. <laughs> I, li I like when everybody looks at me like, well, what, was that supposed to do that? I, no. That's exactly the look I get from clients. There we go. Now, we've got the, the little light on the background. It doesn't look like our senior portrait at all. Why? Why does it look like our senior portrait? It's very dramatic. It's too dramatic, right? Yeah. Mom's not going to like that. <laughs> you know, mom wants a little bit less drama, so we're going to maybe add a little light from the back, right? A little, little hair light action. Mm. Also, is our, is our snoot too tight? I feel like it's, it is as this, is a, as this is a this is a tight snoot. This is very very. Tight. You can pull out the. Uh, yeah. Let, it's not gonna be round. Yeah, let's pull it out and let's see what it looks like. Boom! It's, when he does that, he's like a magician pulling, uh, uh, like like the rags out of his sleeve. Oh, there you go. That actually looks pretty good. So now we've learned that that's nice. See, that's the look that Marissa gives me in between things. Now you see it. She's like. The only problem is it's spilling a lot on her. I'm okay with that though. So, and how does Dave know that it's spilling on her? Because she's lit, right? If it wasn't on her, she wouldn't be lit because none of the light in the space is affecting our shot. That light is the edge of the snoot. I think it's pretty good. Let's start there. Okay. Could also be that flash firing and bouncing in. No, no, it's definitely this. I can see it. Okay. Is this thing on? Is this thing on? Actually, we'll probably move it slightly closer to her or something, but let's just do this first. Because the problem with the light hitting her is that it might create a weird shadow. So I let's see. Come in from a, more like this. Yeah. Let's see. So they kind of there she them. is. Now we're getting there, right? We got our circle of light. She needs that weird color behind her. But still, we got that deadness, right? We want to get like a hair light back there. Now we could. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten about you. You're sitting there waiting for that. I know you are. OK. Let's add the third flash. Because they pay me by the number of flashes I use. So we got to get another flash in here. We're going to do a hair light with it. I think we'll just keep this one bareheaded for now. Oh. Although I'll probably use the extra LumaQuest thing because I have it. Always use all the gear you have all the time. That's the key to photography. No, absolutely not that. <laughs> not that thing at all. Never, never that. We're doing three-point lighting because we feel like it. All right. Oh, here I did it. Is that C? Yep. I'm just going to, again, leave it at zero until I see what we get. Because you can't be less than zero. Oh, that's not terrible. <laughs> More like she has to Okay. <laughs> that's actually, just by itself, it's not terrible, right? I think we might want to do something with it. It's, it's going to be a little bit specular, right? We're getting pumpy highlights. Also, as you can see, it's hard because we can see little bumps and stuff in her skin, which isn't necessarily what we want. I mean, I got a good Instagram filter for that, but let's try to do it without that. <laughs> I'm going to use this thing even though they don't make it anymore, so you guys have to just look at it and wish that you could get it. Oh, hold on. Do we have two? We don't have another uh, strap, though, so we can't do it. Hmm? All right, so this is, um, they, they make a variation of this still. Um, this one's mine. You can't have it. This is, this is the kit. Now it just comes like this, I guess, with the, it's called the bounce or something, or diffuse bounce, or luma bounce, luma bounce yeah. All right, so basically it's, it's a bouncy card, and that, because we're gonna bounce up to it, and it has a little diffusion in the front. Ooh. I know, right? Now, what makes this different than a softbox is that instead of blasting through the front, it's gonna come up at an angle and bounce off, so it's gonna be a little bit uh, funkier. Now, we're going to kind of jerry-rig this because we don't have. Do you want the, the, the I don't think we have a strap, right? Gaff tape. Yes, exactly. <laughs> don't be afraid to use gaff tape if you have to. This is life. <laughs> Let's gaff tape that thing on there. I know. 
Thanks, Seth. Oh, you might have another one. Oh, yeah, the brown is good. Don't use my flow. Did you see I just caught that? I am not athletic, because that was very impressive. <laughs> can you hold Can you hold that? Yeah. Thanks, Marissa. You got it. This is brown gaff tape. I have never in my life seen, seen brown gaff tape except for new. OK, there we go. There we go. That's right. That's right. By the way, hold on, hold on. Well, I'm not done yet. By the way, $600 flash, gaff tape on the modifier. Ghetto fabulous. <laughs> you got the theme, yeah, you're rolling. <laughs> That's good enough, I think. Perfect. Done. That is how we do it around here. That is totally acceptable. Don't worry about it. <laughs> if you have ugly gaff tape, nobody will steal it. Don't buy that black gaff tape, people will always steal it. Now, I want to point out, because I haven't done that yet, that we keep adding stuff and moving stuff, and I'm not changing anything really, right? And the reason why is because I'm using TTL. And when you use TTL, a little tiny guy runs out each time and re-meters it, right? So even though I added that thing, I don't have to do anything. It's just... No, 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 no. Oh, oh, oh. Advanced. I only turned that one light on manual. What? <laughs> oh, no, the rest of it's still in TTL. It's like, what? <laughs> I'm not going full manual. Come on now, guys. I, I could do that. <laughs> oh, all right. So the light looks nicer, but it's overexposed. So it's probably confused as heck because of the brown gaff tape. So I'm going to go to C. <laughs> yeah, Dave's going to change the angle of incident. That will change the angle of reflectance. That's another thing you're supposed to say a lot when you're a photographer. Uh, I am using all LumaQuest right now, I think. Yes. Bam. Actually, I think all of it. Oh, no, that's from a different kit. It, it, I have the something something kit. Uh, I probably should know what things are called. This is the location kit, which makes sense. Oh, look, if you're on location, like at a party or something, that's like a, like a quinceanera or whatever. Right? <laughs> Is that a call consent? What's that? Were they turned 16 or 15 or? I don't know. Anyways, you know what I'm talking about. I lived in Miami. <laughs> All right, so changing my C group, which was overexposed, I'm turning it down one stop. It's actually almost Marissa's birthday. Well, oh, next that, month. Next month. Well, we're not going to be here again until next month, probably. So there you go. All right, that's not terrible. Although she was giving me that look like. It's not my birthday. All right, let's try that again with less of a terrible look. Oh. It's always important to instruct the models. <laughs> By saying less of a terrible look. <laughs> Do something that's not bad. There we go. Perfect. All right, so now we've got, now we have like a, 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 a hair light or separation light coming from the back. We've got the light on her, and we've got uh, a little snoot on the background. Uh, this is all stuff that you can fit in your bag. That's kind of where I started with this, this little LumaQuest kit. All, you'll see all the stuff we're using is really tiny. Um, you can get bigger things for, for speed lights, like the last light box, which I sometimes use. And maybe if we have time, we'll bust it out. Um, what's this going to do for me if I use this? It'll be bigger, right? Bigger equals softer. So I could use this. And this is probably about as big as I personally would go with speed lights. Uh, the problem with going bigger is that you don't, you know, you got, you're using up your batteries. You know, it's just not, it doesn't make sense to put a speed light in a giant box if you don't have to. So. Always, always be uh, sensitive to that. So we might use this if we have time, but first I want to do what the young lady in the back asked me to do because she's, she's calling me a liar now. She's actually text, she's tweeting it right now. She's like, I'm with the Adorama thing, and they said they were going to do something. And You're asking where do you get a Dave though? Yeah, uh, listen, uh, Dave is hard to come by. Well, find out All right, let's do it one more time because Marissa needs this for her Tinder. <gasps> <laughs> but that is exactly what I was Yes. Thinking. Yes. All right. So let's do it. Let's, let's, let's say that you want to, I'm not sure why you want to do this, but let's say we want to do the thing that you asked me to do, which is basically that backlight thingy thing. We're going to shoot the ba backlight and then bounce it back into our face. So we're going to go back down to one light. Maybe that's why you want to do it, right? 
Do I so, kill everything? Let's kill everything. So we're going to strike it, as they say. We'll just leave that one for now. I'll just turn it off. No, Dave is not Quest. But if you go to the Quest, I think on their site they have stuff where Quest talks. Yeah. Okay, good. That's a good question. So, could we do the same thing, let's say, outside? So, instead of getting that circle of light, which is, you know, we'll admit it's not great, right? We just kind of, you know, uh, we want the field behind her. We want her in the sun or we want her outside, right? Yeah, 100%. Here's the thing you can definitely uh, work with the sun with a speed light. Overpowering it is going to be probably not on the, the ticket. But think about it like this the sun is there. Right, and it's doing something, and that what it's doing is probably not ideal for you. Let's say that the sun is, is on your face, but it's a little bit too high, whatever. So what I'm going to do in that case is I'm going to take my speed light and I'm going to mimic the direction of the sun, right? So that when I throw my speed light onto the person, it, it's like the sun. I'm basically using the sunlight but making it better. As a matter of fact, I have a video which, uh, if you go onto uh, Adorama TV. I don't remember which number it is, but I actually go out on the, the, the balcony of my studio and I take that, I believe, and I basically put it between the sun and the subject, and then I flash it. So I'm controlling the light. So basically what you want to do is, if you want to do this outside, number, okay, I'll give you a couple ways to do it. Number one, put them in the shade. Right? That's the most obvious thing. I'm, I'm going to find a tree. I put the person under the tree. I'm going to do this exact same setup. Now I'll just use the, I'll expose for the background the way I want it to look. Then I strobe them. Looks great, right? Let's say I can't do that. I'm in the middle of a field, right? I'm going to look for where the sun is. So let's say this is the sun. It's coming down on my face, but I don't really like exactly where it is. So I'm going to put the speed light kind of there. If the sun's here, or, or put the hair light there, one or the other. So you want to mimic one of the lights to the sun. Put it at the same angle, because otherwise you'll get weird shadows. But yes, you can 100% do it outside. In fact, people are using speed lights for like weddings and stuff. I mean, shooting on location is what you use them for a lot, actually. It's episode 163. Ah, episode 163. This is the reason why I love being online. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so basically what I do with it is I kind of block the sun kind of with it, and then I, I just use the flash instead. So I didn't make that up. I stole it from Joe McNally. I think, oh, you're leaving. That was it. That's what you wanted to know. He's done. He's like, peace. No, it's okay. It's all right. Don't worry about it. Oh, well, this is the opportunity. Everybody go now. They're all sheep. follow each other. Nobody wants to see your thing. Oh, wow, you really are leaving. <laughs> This is my life. My mom's watching this. Come on. OK. <laughs> All right, so let's do this. All right, so we're going to. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to light, make a hair light. And then we're going to. Now, I'm going to explain why we do this, because we do this a lot, actually. If you are bouncing light, it can never be stronger than your main light source, right? So if, if I'm going to, let's say, for instance, light Marissa with the small light, and then I want to have a hair light. I can't put a reflector back here because that won't be bright enough, right? There won't be enough light going past her, hitting the reflector, then going back and giving her a hair light. But we can kind of use that to our advantage because typically hair lights, you want to be a little bit overexposed. So what we can do is take the, the oh, you already have it? Yep. Okay. Take the hair light, blast it past her, and then bounce light back in using a reflector. This is exactly the same thing as being outside with the sun. See, he missed it because he left with the sun and bouncing it back in. Okay, let's Now, we're going to have to play around a little bit with the exposure, I'm sure, because we're in TTO. <laughs> I'm sorry that I give people a hard time. All right, so uh, where are we at? Uh, is that B or C? That's C back there? Uh, it should be A. That's A. Oh, wow. Yeah. You're fast. OK, so did, are the lights turned off? Yep. Oh, the numbers are not going to do anything then. All right. Now, it's set to underexpose a little bit, which is probably good. Let's see. OK, that did something. It's not quite what we want. I think there's two things we can do to fix this, right? Number one, aim this so that less of it hits her particularly. Maybe put it up a little bit and shoot it down. And number two, try to get that a little closer, right? Why are we doing that? Because every now it's hitting her on the cheek. If I just turn the power up, which is what you might have immediately thought, like, hey, it's too dark, turn the power up, her cheek is going to get all kinds of blown out. So we want to angle the light. Because remember that whatever light source you have, 
you can also zoom it. Whatever light source you have, the center of it is almost always going to be, I mean, there's very few lights that are completely even when you cast them out. The center is going to be hotter. So if you use what they call the, the feather of the light, right, because the light's coming like this, and we hit her with that, that'll, in its, uh, by its nature, be a little bit less powerful. So we're hitting her with like the edge of the light for her cheek. We just want to kiss her cheek, if you will, with light. That feels good. Good, good, good. Boom. Okay, that's better on her. We still don't have enough light on her face, though. Mm -hmm. So we gotta get a little more reflectance. Yeah, get that in close. Let me do a little test shot to see where it's falling. Is that it? Yeah, it is actually. Oops, hold on, let me change my focus font. super directional, so. It is really directional. Let's see what we get. Yeah, there we go. You no, know, she's getting light on her, and you can mess around with it, you know, in all different ways. But you can actually remember right now, we're basically lighting her with this light. Is that what you meant, or is that not at all what you were talking about? Oh, okay. This is not at all what she meant, and I went to the whole thing from. Okay. Well, you wanted to do it from below, but I think it would have looked bad. That's why I didn't do that. <laughs> I did, I did, you wanted the light down here, right? Yeah, we'll do exactly what you asked for. Hold on. Now I'll do exactly it. So she wants the light, the, the reflector here. Like yeah, low from below. And the light up like this, I believe. Is it? I believe that's what you mean, right? Is that what you're talking about now? That's better? Do you want to come up here and do it? Come, 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 come. Okay. I don't know. Why not? I want to see it. Well, I don't know. Well, I don't know that. All right, let's see. Let's see this first. Yep, go ahead. Do it. What do you like it to be? All right, so this is the part of the, the oh, oh, all right, she's going all over, completely different than what I was going to do. Oh, 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 look at you. Oh, don't hit her in the head with it. I, don't, I really don't want this in the shot, though. So. Oh, okay, so but you want it in the center shooting forward? Okay, we can do that. Can you do that for her? This do is it. my idea. Nice, soft source right in her face. Okay. And that light on it, but you got to angle it down a little. Okay, let's do it. Let's see what happens. Are you available to teach classes here? <laughs> you don't want me, trust me. <laughs> oh, Dave's going to sandbag it. Safety first, safety last. He's all about the stage. Mm -hmm. uh, Did you want me looking at the, straight at him? So the I, whole idea is that I'm using that light. I, I'm thinking this is going to be a nice, soft light. I, we'll find out, right? No, is, is that not going to hit her? Forehead? Well, I think I think that that the light That's will be soft. Happen. Why will it be soft? Because this is soft, and it's That's not right. as powerful as that, and it's larger. Yep, it will definitely be soft. But that's going to hit her in the head. I think, right? Yeah. Well, he can raise it. He's just getting the angle down. Yeah. Yep. Higher. Yeah. He's going to back it up. He's going to make it harder. There you. Dave's go. good like that. Uh, it's a process. You got to come down a little, probably. Uh, lower or the angle? The angle needs to come mm -hmm. down a little. You'll probably the just the spin front. the arm, maybe. Yeah. Just spin the arm, yeah. There, that's better. There you go. That's there. That's good. All right, this is it, Mercy. Ready? This mm -hmm. is gonna be your LinkedIn profile. <laughs> Boom. That's very dark. Her head. We need a little. We her head's getting hit with the light. Okay. Her head got the light. That's right. Oh, yeah. That's what I was talking about. But we can even come from the side a little. Right. Well, the head got the light, right? But also, the light's coming from the back. Whenever you're heavily backlighting something in TTL, it's going to underexpose because the light is facing the camera. So at this point, we're going to have to. Uh, I don't know what we're going to do. That okay. might be better, but it's still Maybe. Gonna hit, it's going to hit her. Probably have to put a card it will definitely behind her. her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You yeah. can try that. I can... <laughs> uh, it's going to hit you no matter what, as you'll see. Yeah. Oh, it's just not enough. It's yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the, the okay. So all right. All right. All right. So so here here's here's the thing. You're right. You are absolutely right. The reflector should be closer. Right. If you want the soft light, but I wouldn't use silver. Okay. Okay. So the problem that we're going to have here, though, is that let's just put the light here. So right. Right. Yeah. Is that this is our light source, right? Where's it coming from? Down below. Okay. Typically speaking, 
uh, 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 you don't want to light somebody from underneath. But let's just see. Maybe it'll look interesting. My, my finger was more like 45, right? Okay. So that is directly at this, and then this is going to hit her here. Right. So okay. Maybe more like that. Maybe. You don't mind her blocking on. Okay, so what's going to happen is the light's relatively low, so I think that it's going to give you a horror okay, movie but look. It is, it's a little softer than, than what we were dealing with before. Like, I'm, I was just looking for a softer look. Right? Hmm, okay. Well, it's hitting on the forehead right now, but do you see? Same softness. This is now direction of light, right? Underneath. Over, right? See the difference? Your your idea is good, right? But if you light somebody from underneath, you're going to get Marissa. You're going to get the kind of scary movie type light. But yeah, bouncing the light off the card. The Canon, uh, twenty-four to seventy-two point eight L two point something. But yes, yeah, it's a twenty-four seven. Yeah, we have light on our forehead, which we could mess around and try to get rid of, but. It's a good, it's a good concept, um, and you're right that using a bounce card like this actually creates a nice soft light and gives you separation. The thing that I would say though is be careful of the direction of your light. Light coming from underneath is just generally not going to be as pleasing as light coming from above, because in life, the light usually comes from above, right? We we are used to seeing light from above. So when we see it coming from a weird direction, it can actually uh, throw us off. It's not even that this doesn't look good; it's just that it doesn't look natural. Um, where this looks much more natural, uh, are you making it so that it won't have light on it for it? It would get something else going. Well, if you don't want the hair light, yep. then I would suggest not even having a light behind it. Yeah, exactly. I just put it right there. Yeah. I don't want the hair light. Hair lights are so 15 minutes ago. <laughs> okay. All right. So we'll do this. This is the one. You ready? This is it. You've waited your whole life for this. This is your moment. Is that like an M&M? What? Is that M&M? Oh, yeah. This eight mile. Yeah, it's like eight mile. It's yeah, eight mile. Yeah. This is your eight mile. <laughs> yeah, you were ready. There you All go, right. Mr. Ed. That's, <laughs> that's the real Marissa. <laughs> All right. All right, so let's do that and do we have another card? Let's do Phil as well. Can we, can we manage a Phil in there too? Can we do a Phil? Yeah, like, like a double, like a double double. Yeah, perfect. Good, good, good. Uh, you're a tiny bit in? Yep, good. Let's see what that looks like. There we go. Wall of light, right? Soft, right? Soft because it's big. Simple, right? It's still a little flat because uh, there's no hair light or anything, so let's put a hair light in again. Let's do that. What do you use for hair light? All right. Have somebody hold what? Let's do it. Who wants to hold stuff? Oh, boom. We got volunteers. Boom, he was done. Come on. This is it. This is it. This is it. How many things do we have to hold? Just, to, just the reflectors. You got the reflectors. Okay. All right. Who's gonna be the photographer? Oh, I see how. Oh, he doesn't want to hold anything. He's like, no, I got a nice jacket. I'm the photographer. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, he's got all dressed up. All right. Don't screw it up. Do not do a better job than me. That's the important part. All right. Questions before we do this. No, you guys are ready. You're like, I want to see what's going to happen here. Now, I think, I actually don't know. I think we're in TTL. This is a C, Dave? Huh? Is that C or A? Uh, here should be A. I don't like you asking if it's C. And B is the hair light. They're asking for white above, silver below. White above, silver below. Done. That's going to be easy. That's going to be yes. <laughs> that's, my, that's my comments on that. You're, you're going to basically go back to a hard light underneath. Well, we'll find out. If, you, if it's reflected perfectly in the same angle. If the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflectance, then the the inverse square law will uh, take care of the... Yeah, yeah. Hair, shoulders, but try not to be in the shot. It's important to know all the... Uh, what's that? <laughs> on the chat room? Uh, it's important to know all the cool photography terms so that when your client starts asking you questions, you can just say stuff. Wait, so they don't want to just Yeah, just like say something that's confusing, be like, oh, you know, the, the reflectance of the, you know, specular highlights. Well, Richard Dye on Facebook wants to see white above, silver below. 
Dye above silver below. Yeah. Okay, Richard Dye. Yeah, I silver cards that I made two of them. Yeah, of different sizes, by the way. Yeah, there's a point to that. And yeah. Okay, so I'm putting I'm everything back to zero. <laughs> like I said, when we change things, we want to put everything. Do you know how to work this thing? Okay. So you look through this part. Right. All right, there's a button right here that you press. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's Marissa. Uh, when she, uh, she's never going to look like normal, but when she looks halfway <laughs> decent, then just take the. <laughs> The hat's staying on now, though. I think it's the outer armor in the oh, front. Oh, wait a second. Hold on. Oh. Whoa. He just shredded you. <laughs> uh, all right, so what's happening? <laughs> Hold on, we got all kinds of like lens flare. What are you, a cinematographer? Come on. No, she had the boys at the perfect angle going to the lens. Okay, so we're a little uh, underexposed, right? right? So this is, this is A. So we're going to go here. <laughs> And we're going to basically grab group. Oh, oh, the boards weren't in place? No. Oh, oh, then I'm not going to change anything then. All right. I take it back. I'm not changing anything. Yeah, it was like a weird. Who knows what's going on these days? I got one. People are throwing stuff. Hold on. Do we need another person? Oh, we need, another, we need more help. Wow, that's going to be over. We don't have another helper? Come, come, come. All right. No, we got it. We got another helper. So you're not trying to balance what you've seen right now. You're trying to balance this flashlight. Oh, yeah, move. So that's like get out of the shot, Daniel. <laughs> go, go sit down. I'm going to sit in the audience. One flash bouncing off one card and the other flash bouncing off the other card? No. So what's happening right now is this flash, was it set at 24 probably, I'm guessing? Yeah. yeah. This is at 24 millimeters. This is actually hitting both cards. Right, so how about this guy back This here? is also hitting both cards. Over. This is also hitting the cards, and it's a hair light, I guess? No, because you want yeah. the right spot. Yeah, we want to get... No, it's hitting fire. Oh. Oh, I like that. Keep your head like that. Oh, oh, yeah. excuse me. <laughs> oh, was... All right, I'm moving. I'm sorry. <laughs> He's got the motor drive on. We, uh, what's going on here? Oh, huh. all right. This is a little very nice. Yeah, let's do that one. Yeah, why is that not firing? Yeah, you got the lens flare. Uh, if somebody wants to buy me a lens hood, well, you should just put your hand by the lens. Yeah, you got to, you got to do it. You got to, well, that side, that's where the flash is. Oh, like that. Yep. You want to gas tape it? Nah, we got it. Well, you got Chris Sonk here. Standing by for hair light. We got Chris Ants in the back. Is that a Leica? No, I can't tell what it is. It's probably a Fuji. All right, so we got the, we've, this, we've gone out of control. <laughs> I'm just going to point that out. So it's, it's out of control. I'm basically done. These guys just took over. You see what they did here? I didn't ask them to do that. I got out the little guy. He wears, he, wears, he wears a jacket. He comes in all fancy. Oh, look at you. She's got her own planet right there. She's thinking about she's Yeah. Ooh. That's actually pretty nice, except for the, yeah, try, try, to, try to feather off that, uh, that, that, uh, yeah. Yeah, other side, yeah. Yeah, I think it's all working now. This is what I've become. I'm just holding the thing. Anti-flash. You know... By the way, when I, when I was a photo assistant in Miami, <laughs> when I was a photo assistant in Miami, we used to stand there with, with, with a black flag the whole day over the lens. <laughs> That's, like, <laughs> That's called sabotage. Never let the guy standing up there take a better shot than me. Come on. He's cheating. Can you wave a little bit? Work it. Canon sells lens hoods, you know. I, I had a lens hood at one point. <laughs> it's not doing what? Don't think about it, it's gonna shoot. It doesn't click. Close. It doesn't click. Maybe you're right in focus. Yeah. Make, make sure you're in focus. Well, no, it's autofocus. Just push the button down halfway. Did you break my camera? <laughs> this is the 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 the, the one D X Mark II. Um, okay, you can't make it happen. Let me see. What's happening? Let me look. Digital tech. Yeah, because your focus spot is right here, so we got to put that on her. You got this weird composition. There you go. I mean, and when I say weird, I'm saying it very nicely. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
All right, all right. Come on now, buddy. Let's make it happen. Okay. <laughs> it's not like people are hanging out here waiting for someone. Um, you started this, I'm just going to say. It's you. You asked me to get out of the seat. Now we're getting to it. They're asking if you can reiterate what's causing the flare. Okay, so basically, let me kind of talk about what's going on here. Even though, uh, so we've got, you guys can shoot. So this light, we're basically shooting the light right at the lens. I don't have a lens hood, so we're having some issues with lens flare. Um, so we're just using our hand to block it, but that flare is because this light is hitting the lens. I mean, yeah, I mean. This guy comes out of the lens. Is the light diameter? Is this a Tamron lens hood? What's going on? No. <laughs> oh, that was nice. Thanks. No, it's the wrong size. Don't you have the same lens as me? What happened? What, do you get the smaller lens? What's up with that? Yeah, well, mine's the, the micro coated, blah, blah, blah. You want to just do a. What's that one? Actually, yo, you want Cinephone? Yeah, that looks like the right one. Watch it, watch it, watch it. Oh, my God. I didn't realize. What do I have, like a freaky lens and nothing to fix on? <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> this is why we're at Adorama. Oh, there you go. How did I get in the middle of this? What? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I know. You're watching online right now and you're like, Daniel, why, why is no lens hood fit on your lens? I think this might be the special prototype version 5 of this lens. Look how easy it is to use speed lights, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> this is all you need to do this if you want to use speed lights. People. <laughs> this is how we do it. By the way, this makes it more communal. <laughs> See, Lori should have came to my speed like that. <laughs> and all I want to say is that whenever somebody says to me, oh, Daniel, I don't have all these stands, I don't have all these things, whatever, I, I didn't have these people. Right. They wanted to help. <laughs> how many people does it take to use speed lights? <laughs> it takes a lot of people to use speed lights correctly. But the beauty of this, though, is this is how you get people involved, you know? Get some friends, all be photographers. Yeah. So what I would say to this is, or we could use light stamps. But I've literally traveled to like other countries and stuff. Oh, there you go. Oh! oh. Opa! Now do it again. Now do it again. <laughs> I mean, that is the it's all right. You looked all day, Melissa. Just stay there because I can't see anything. Well, she's like, get out of my way. <laughs> she's, she's like, shoot. Oh. 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 Those are the reflector yeah. angles. Yeah. Too close? Yeah. Yeah. TTL is a little confused. Yeah, TTL has no idea what's going on. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's how, I like that it's bright though, because it makes it have very, it's very uh, starlit. Yeah. 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 All right, all right. Why is she so far to the right? Rule of thumb. You know what? Get out of here. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Well done. Just, go on, guys. Good job. All right. Good job. Thank you. All right, so oh I hope you guys saw how easy and how you can do speed lights all by yourself and that doesn't take any extra. <laughs> right, it can be group fun. Um, but no, I, I mean, I've literally traveled places with just some speed lights in my bag and just asked people that were around to help me and people are happy to help you. So um, you can see how pretty simple it is. That's one reason why TTL is good too because if you have the guy that's never held a speed light before and he's not exactly perfect every time, it will be uh, decent. That's why I went back to TTL. Other questions? Should we do one shot with the big box just because we can? Yeah, do it here. We're going to do a shot with the big box just because we can. That's okay. Well, how late do I have to go? Come on now. We go to seven at night. We're not this seven? No, I'm not doing the seven. We're not doing, we're not this daytime. <laughs> All right, let's do one with the big flash just to end it up. Yes. So if you change the angle of the flash from being straight on, does the TTL calculate the angle? Yes. TTL basically does what's called a pre-flash. Let me see if I can capture a pre-flash here for you guys. These pre-flashes are very exotic and hard to capture, but I will try to do it. The trick to doing a pre, to, to seeing a pre-flash is it's not going to expose properly. Is I'm going to go uh, rear curtain, if I know how to do it. So I'm going to go a rear curtain sync, which is basically means it's going to fire the flash at the end. Uh, There's a way to do it. Somebody online tell me how to do it. Well, in any case, I've now pressed a button and it says scanning. So I'm not going to touch the button anymore. 
There we go. Oh, that's interesting. It gave me an analysis of all the channels in the space. Oh, yes. It's so fancy. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip doing this for a second, and I'm just going to tell you this. Basically, before you take any picture, the flash does what's called a pre-flash. So it shoots out a little burst of light, boop, and that's how it kind of knows its angle and where it's at. And then it, and it analyzes that and gives you the correct exposure. That's when I say I, the little guy comes out, that's what I'm talking about, is the pre-flash. So you can put the flash anywhere. If I just threw the flash on the ground, it would try to give me a good exposure. It doesn't care where it is, right? Um, though there's times, because of the nature of pre-flash, that it'll be thrown off because if the light's, let's say, in the back, facing the lens, it's like, because uh, you know, it doesn't know what to do, because it's used to like, bouncing off things, and it's getting direct light. And that's usually when you'll trick the TTL a lot. If you keep the lights more or less kind of in front of the camera, it's usually pretty accurate. Yes. It was. You're right. You saw a light bouncing in. Right. But that wasn't affecting the shot. Because it's not. Yeah, because the flash is overpowering it. Right. Well, okay, so the question is what if you just use a reflector and not a flash? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's a whole other class. Come on now. We're doing the speed light class. No, the, the reality is that we're in like a studio here with like professional lighting. So yeah, I could easily just hold a reflector and it would look fine. But if you're in bad light, you know. But yeah, of course, if you're somewhere and the light is great and you just want to fill in, that will absolutely work. Remember that the concepts of light are basically the same. Whether I'm using a speed light, I'm using the sun, I'm using a hot light, I'm using a big strobe. If the light's coming here and it's creating shadows and I add a reflector, it will work. If I'm shooting my friend outside and the sun's behind them, right? So when you buy, you used to buy a box of film. You know what film is? Everybody knows what film is? Right? It shows you how to like, take a picture, and it was always like, don't put the sun behind the person. No, no, put the sun behind the person. Like, that's what you should do. But the reason why is because it throws off your exposure. Right? The sun's behind it, the camera gets infused. You put the sun behind somebody, the light comes at you, you hold the reflector, that's exactly what we just did here. Yeah. So yes, 100%. So they're saying, yes? They're saying you, uh, you said you can't overpower the film with a speed light, but can you use an ND filter to help you do that? OK, so I said you can't overpower the film with a speed light. I don't think I said you can't, but yeah, it's going to be very difficult. But the question is, can you add an ND filter to do that? Well, no, because the thing is, if you put an ND filter on your lens, it blocks more daylight, but it's also going to block the flash. In fact, that's what high-speed sync is for. So the whole reason to use high-speed sync, which is why I never use it in here, because you don't need it because we're inside, is so that you can work with the sun better. And generally speaking, if you're in a really bright area, um, you can use high-speed sync to go like really fast on your shutter to get it dark outside, although that does still increase the amount of flash you need. So generally, you see people using multiple flashes to do that. But that's how you overpower the sun. You need to use multiple flashes, usually. I mean, you could take a single speed light and put it really close to somebody outside and probably get it pretty dark out. I mean, they're pretty powerful. Um, I used to shoot, uh, when I lived in Miami all the time on the beach with like a little softbox on my speed light, and my assistant would hold it like a few feet away, and it got the skies darkish. All right. so. Now we're set up. It's like now we got some money, right? Before we were just kind of yes. Um, I realized that there's uh -oh. a diffuser on the glass and then the, the box. Is there an yep. advantage to having like a double diffusion? Okay, good question. Yeah. So for this, in the, the case of using this flash, and you might want to do it all the time, but I usually only use it with the with the big boxes. Your flash generally comes with a little diffuser box thingy that goes on top of it, like a little soap dish, you just call them, um, or a stofen. Um, that is w w scatters the light. So if I'm inside, is that my phone? OK. That scatters the light, which means that I'm inside of a box, right? And, and especially in a big box, I want to get the most coverage as possible on the front of my screen. So that's scattering it inside, making it more even. But you need more power to get it through. It will absorb some power, sure. It's going to take up some power. But again, when you're using speed lights, think smart, right? If you see people to use speed lights, they put them in a big box, they put the thing really far away, they put it really, like, no, like, I don't have a lot of power. My box is a foot away from her. That's, that's why it's that close to her. Like, this is why I'm working this way. You know, yeah, you, you, it eats power, but we have tons of power. All right. What's weird is that's the same alarm that I use when my lunch, so now I'm, like, starving. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You think I'm doing it? Oh, 
<laughs> All right. Oh, man. So now you're going to tell bad jokes. I tell the bad jokes. Come on now. All right. All right, here we go. All right, all right. So big, big. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and there you go. All right, so we are, this is an A. Is that one on, B? Okay, so here we go. We're, we just group A, TTL, say it zero, boom. Big flash. Nice and soft and even, right? Still, it goes dark behind her. Why? And under her, too, because this feather does not hit in the background. Because of the inverse square law. The background is really far away, right? So we can do this. Um, you can have your chin down a bit, I think. There you go. That should be fine. Yeah, and then do a little fill. The beauty of using a big box, of course, is that now we have more light to throw into the fill. Right? So boom, we filled her in. Looks pretty. Right? Now... The background's dark. We want some light in the background. You guys all know how to do this because now I'm doing it again, right? Let's make it not green. Really green. Nobody ever says green. What color do you want the background blue, to be? Blue. Purple. You make me say not green. I don't have purple. You make me do blue. We got red. Purple. Let's go red. red. Nobody goes green. Come on. No, I like green. I'm good with you. I actually like purple, but I don't have any purple jokes. I think that was an FL green. Isn't there a red one in there? I think I saw red. Try to like flip through this little packet. There, there you go. Red. Ah, red. red. Fire Ooh. engine red. red. Yeah. All right, so we're going to do like the, 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 there's like a, the, the, it's on, the place is on fire. So you're frightened. <gasps> right. Like that. Boom. Oh, all right, hold on. We got to get the red up there first, though. Don't waste the good expressions. Okay. 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 This is also a. You know what though? Let's actually let's let's do like a ah, screw it. You know what? We got time, right? It's Friday. What, what day is it? It's Thursday. Thursday. You only do these on Thursdays <laughs> for the last like five years. I have been doing these on. Th <laughs> yeah, he's losing his what mind. What happened here? <laughs> well, you know, it's it's late. It's late. It's late. It's six thirty. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. It's past my it's past my bedtime. This is your early bird diner moment. <laughs> You know, normally I'm in bed by now. Happy hour, right? <laughs> All right. This is why you normally end the them at 4 or 4.30. Yeah, exactly. He's got to go home. Okay. All right, so I think what we want to do, let's, let's throw it in the softbox, actually, if, if you don't mind. What? Should we throw it in that? Uh, actually, do it like that. It's fine. Yeah, I, I, uh, listen, this is late for me, guys. I'm not, I'm not used to this. Uh... <laughs> I'm usually home. What's that one in? Ooh. Yeah, go love. This is the uh, Last Delight Easy Box 25.5 inches. Oh, yeah. Dave looks very concerned. That's actually perfect. Actually, if we could have a little bit lower so we get a little more feather. Yeah, I want I want the the vignette at the top. Oh my god, that does look like a stock photo. Like, how do I get out of this abusive stare? I'm good. And there you go. Go on. All right, and I think uh, reflector. Yeah, do you want you want it to lower though, right? Oh, hold on. I'll, I'll test it. Perfect. <laughs> All right, good. That's like the large red sun dying in the background. All right, and uh, let's reflect. Let us reflect upon this moment. All right, here we go. Boom. Red background, pretty light on her face, super simple, two speed lights. I didn't need seven people up here. I'm just saying. I'm, I mean, you needed all those people. I didn't need. No. <laughs> Yeah, see, it's it's Friday in France. No, right. Yes. All right. So, I, did somebody watch from France? Yeah. I have a question about France. Sorry, guys. So, I went to France. Eric to pass. B. Eric B. So, on the menu in the restaurant, like I wanted escargot, right? Really and, but it said in English snails. So, does escargot actually mean snails in French? That's what I want to know. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know it meant snails. I thought it was like the name of a. Yeah, I know I don't say things correctly. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's all right. Call me out in the middle of all this. That's, I, I appreciate it. 
<laughs> right. By the way, delicious. I took pictures of it, sent it to my sister. She said gross. I love them. It's still the most delicious thing ever. Maybe not the most delicious thing. Chocolate is better. What's that? What, should I try the red dress? I don't think we should change because oh. we're done. Okay. But Dave's adding another light. I always do. We have to finish with the third light because what's rule number one of photography? You get paid by the amount of gear that you use. That's right. So we're going to use the third light. Where's the, uh, I'm not in the frame. Mm, you are in a bit, but I will crop heavily to the right because that's what my friend over there did. He has a cool jacket. Oh, that's right. I'm just checking my frame. Yep. Okay, good. All right. Yep. She's thinking about it. Hmm. You'll probably want to put this one like. That's low. B? Yeah, like minus two or something. Okay, that's B, right? Yeah. Alright, so I'm gonna go to B, which is my uh my hair light. I think it's just a little Yep. Easy. A little Dave likes a subtle hair light. Mm. I'm gonna go two stops down. To go with the fire unit. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna increase the fill a little bit too. Yeah. Oh. Mm. That fell too bright? No, that's or actually not bad. Should I go a smidge more? Smidge more. I'm yeah, I'm going I'm going to the side because this gentleman did it and it was really nice. And and what and what, what did I say earlier? I get all my stuff by stealing it from people. <laughs> Alright, so here we go. Nice. There we go. A little bit of fill light on the hair, a little bit of red background. I think this has a little bit of everything going on, right? We peppered in the different stuff. Questions, thoughts, concerns before we wrap. Just, just one yes. Question. I know. I'm gonna. I, I'm. I'm. I'm tempted to give you a hard time, but I feel like I've given so many people a hard time to say that I will not. You don't see the pole because I turned the camera away from it. She's not blocking it. No. I moved the camera. Yeah. Yeah. I'll show it to you. The pole is right there. I just turned the camera. I know. I'm tricky like that. You gotta. You gotta watch me. I do stuff like that. Okay. Any questions? Nothing. That was so easy. When's the next demo? We're closed for Passover. So if people are celebrating Passover, uh, enjoy, I guess, or have a good Passover. I don't know what the proper word is. Um, yes. Oh. Now you have a question in the middle of my closer? Come on now, man. Why am I using an icon? Give me an icon camera. I'll use it. I am brand agnostic. All right. You actually do use an icon. I do have, yeah, I have an icon too. Yes. <laughs> and has a uh, And a Lego. Okay, so we're closed for Passover. Yeah. I, I don't know if it's closed. Then you guys are at NAB. So it's going to be a few weeks before I'll be back. Uh, back but Seth will be back on the 16th, though, if you guys want to see that. Are you live streaming that? He's probably not live streaming it, so sorry, guys. On, it's it's Mercer's birthday. Then she'll be 21. 21. So we're going to be at the <laughs> bar. So we're going to go drinking for Mercer's birthday. So if you guys want to come to that, you'll see the event on Eventbrite. Um, <laughs> We could probably do that, actually. We'll talk about that. Yes, snails are escargot. Yes. So, okay, that's why I, I was like, are they just doing that so I would like to know what it was? But I, like, I knew it was snails. Anyways, it's delicious. I love escargot. I'm just going to put that out there. Oh, but check me out. I'll be doing a bunch of stuff next week, hopefully, with Seth. Oh, yeah, live. He's already committed to it live. So check me out on my channel, which is Daniel Norton Photographer, on Facebook and YouTube. Um, Dave, you can see at Dave.com. Dave Brusca. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, okay, so, but then check Adorama events. So, adorama.com slash events to see the next onset. It will be in, I think, three weeks. What? Because we're closed for the next two. Not the next two. There's one in April before the end, before the end of all. Oh, you, no, you don't see mine, though. I only care about me. <laughs> no, no, I think I'm not up again till, the, till three weeks from now. Okay. Yeah, and then I'll, maybe before then. So, check that out, and then hopefully we'll back to a regular schedule in May. But definitely check out my channel. We're going to do some fun stuff. Seth has some pretty cool stuff in mind, and we have some new equipment to try. Your channel on YouTube? Yeah, on YouTube, Daniel Norton Photographer, or on Facebook, Daniel Norton Photographer. Easy enough, right? Any questions? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mine's is about the tripod head. Okay, tripod head. head. I'll yes. talk about that after the thing. We'll close from online. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I'll see you next time. Oh, oh and we get clapped.